A pleasant day to each and everyone. My name is Kenneth D.C. De Los Santos and I will be presenting to you how to find the Likert scale's mean, how to find its range, and how to interpret them. But first, let us define what is a Likert scale. Likert scale pronounced as Likert, not Likert. So a lot of people mispronounce it. It should be Likert, not Likert. It is named after its inventor, an American social psychologist, Rancis Likert. So basically, a Likert scale is a rating scale that assesses opinions, attitudes, or behaviors quantitatively. So let's have a short review. When we say quantitatively, it means numbers. Okay, so mostly you'll find this very, very common in research. You'll see 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, or sometimes even 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, depending on the needs of the researcher. So we have different example of this one. Uh, we have different examples of Likert scale. This is a list created by Sorrel Brown in 2010. Um, from Iowa State University. So we have, for example, a level of agreement. So we have strongly agree, agree, undecided, disagree, and strongly disagree. You'll find this very common in research. Like for example, strongly agree would be five, agree would be four, undecided would be three, disagree would be two, and strongly disagree would be one. So there are different variations of agreement. These are just some examples. We also have for frequency, uh, we have always, very frequently, rarely, and never. You'll notice that this is only a four-point Likert scale. So compared to the agreement, which has five, frequency has four. But don't forget, these are just some examples. For frequency, you can also have five-point Likert scale, three-point Likert scale. You can also have six-point Likert scale, depending on the need of the researcher, okay? We also have for quality, we have good, fair, and poor. One of the examples of quality is in interpreting grades in report cards of the learners. You'll see excellent, outstanding, good, fair, and poor. That is an example of a five-point Likert scale in terms of quality of grades or quality of learning of the learners. Likelihood, we have either true or false. That is a two-point That is a two point Likert scale. Or we can also have a four-point Likert scale or a three-point Likert scale, like very likely for three, somewhat likely for two, not likely for one. So again, this is, these are just some examples of Likert scale. You can have different examples of Likert scale depending on the need of the researcher and depending on your need. If you were to research one subject which requires a Likert scale where the learner or where the respondents will rank their answers. Okay. So first, let us know how to find the mean in the Likert scale because finding the mean is important in determining how to interpret the data presented in Likert. You will not be able to interpret the Likert scale properly if you will not be able to find the mean. So first, I would like to note that the mean in Likert scale is not similar with the mean of an average data. This is because in an average data, all you have to do is to add all of the data, then divide it by the number of data sets that you have. For example, when you're talking about grades, for example, there are three subjects. For example, mathematics is 90, uh, science is 85, English is, uh, let's say, 75. In, in normal instance, all you have to do is to add all those three, then divide by three because there are three subjects. But in Likert scale, it's not the same. In Likert scale, uh, the first step is multiply, multiply each frequency by their scale. So what does it mean with that? So frequency means how many, num how many respondents answered to that particular question. So for example, let's have question number one or statement number one. I love the subject. So three respondents said that they strongly agree. For example, this is strongly agree, uh, somewhat disagree, etc. So three respondents answered five. So 
first is you multiply each frequency by their scale. So 3 multiplied by 5. So that's 15. Next, this one, 5 multiplied by its frequency, 4. So 5 times 4, we have 20. Next, we have 0. 0 times 3, we know that the answer is just 0. 2 times 2, it's just 4. Next, is we have 0 multiplied by 1. So we have zero as well. Now that you're done multiplying um, each frequency to their corresponding scale, the next step that we have is to find the sum of each frequency times scale. Next step is you have to find the sum or you just have to add 15 plus 20 plus zero plus four plus 0. So let's have 15 plus 20. That's just 35. 35 plus 0, it's still 35. 35 plus 4, we have 39. And 39 plus 0 is still 39. Okay. Next step is to divide by the number of respondents. So to find the number of respondents, all you have to do is to just add all the frequencies. So 3 plus 5 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0. So we have 3 plus 5 is 8 plus 0 is 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 0 is 10. So 39 divided by 10. So 39 divided by 10 is just 3.90. And that's our mean for statement number one, I love the subject. So what if you were what if you wonder, for example, what if sir we only have the scale of four, three, two, one? Then it's just the same. All you have to do is just multiply the frequency by the scale. So for example, let's forget that we have five. So then skip five. Just multiply 5 times 4, 0 times 3, 2 times 2, and 0 times 1. So you just multiply it based on the scale that you have. It's not always multiplied by 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's multiplied by the scale. So if you have 3, 2, 1, then you multiply it by, you multiply it by 3, 2, 1. If you have 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you multiply it by 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. Okay, so... 39 divided by 10 is just 3.90. So let's three, let's see other examples. For example, we have 4. 4 times 5, we have 20. 5 times 4 is also 20. 1 times 3 is just 3. And then 0 times 2. And 0 times 1 is just 1. So we have 20 plus 20, that's 40. 40 plus uh, 3 is just 43. So 43 divided by 10 is 4.30 or 4.3. And also for the last one, 1 times 5, 0 times 4, 9 times 3, 0 times 2, 0 times 1. Then you add all of those, you'll have 32, then 32 divided by 10 is 3.20. Now remember, that formula is for finding the mean of a Likert scale. How about the overall mean? Because overall mean doesn't have a Likert scale. So for overall mean, all you have to do is to just add all the means. So you add 3.90 plus 4.30 plus 3.20, then divide them by how many statements. So for example, in this particular instance, we have three statements. So you add 3.90 plus 4.30 plus 3.20, then divide by 3. The answer is 3.80. Now, let's go with the range. So in finding the range for verbal interpretation, because we need uh, the range in order for us to interpret our data. 
So remember, again, first you need to find the range so that you'll be able to interpret your mean. Okay, so the formula for the range is we have uh, the highest scale minus the lowest scale divided by the highest scale again. So let's see. Let's have an example. So again, let's remember that our formula is highest scale minus the lowest scale divided by the highest scale. So for example, we have a Likert scale consisting of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5 for strongly agree, 4 for agree, 3 for undecided, 2 for disagree, and 1 for strongly disagree. So let's have that for let's have this an exact as an example. So our highest is 5 and our lowest is 1. So 5 minus 1 and divided by, by the highest number, which is also 5. So 5 minus 1 is just 4. Then you copy 5. So we have 4 over 5 or 4 divided by 5. So you divide the 2. 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.80. Remember that number? That is our range. Again, uh, all you have to do is to find the difference between the highest scale minus the lowest scale, then the highest scale divided by the high scale. So for in, in this instance, we have 5 for 3 to 1. 5 is the highest, 1 is the lowest. 5 minus 1 divided by 5. Okay, so we have 5 minus 1 is 4. Then copy the 5. 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.80. That's our range. Now, it's not the end of our computation. So, for example, we have range of 0 0.80. That's in a 5-point Likert scale. The first step is to add that to the lowest scale. So, 1.00 plus 0 0.80. That's 1.80, which means that our new a uh, range for strongly disagree would be the lowest to the sum of the lowest to the range. So 1.0 to 0 0.80, that's 1.80. This is now our new range. Next. Remember our last? So we have 0, 1.80 is the last one. So again, add 0 0.80 because that is our range. 0 1.80 plus 0 0.80 is 2.60. So our new scale for disagree is 1.80 to 2.60. Again, 2.60 is our last. So we will continue with that one. 2.60 plus our range, which is 0 0.80, is equals to 3. 40. So our new range for undecided is 2.60 to 3.40. Next one for agree. So our last one is 3.40. So you add again 0 0.80, which is the range. 3.40 plus 0 0.80 is 4.20. So our new scale for that is 3.40 to 4.20. And of, of course, the last one. 4.20 is the last one. We don't need to add 0 0.80 because that would exceed 5. So all you have to do for the last one is to four, is to just say the last uh, sum, which is 4.20, up to the last value, which is 5.00. Okay? Now let's proceed. So our new scale would be strongly disagree. 1.0 to 1.80, disagree, 1.80 to 2.60, undecided is 2.60 to 3.40, agree is 3.40 to 4.20, and strongly disagree is 4.20 to 5.00, which is based on our uh, computed range a while ago. Let's have another example. So for example, we only have a 3-point Likert scale, 3 for good, 2 for fair, and 1 for poor. Again, remember that our formula consists of the highest scale minus the lowest scale divided by the highest scale. So our highest scale here is 3. Our lowest scale here is 2. So 3 minus 2. Uh, 3 minus 1, sorry. So our lowest is 3 and our, our highest is 3 and our lowest is 1. So 3 minus 1. 1, then divided by 3, which is our highest number. 3 minus 1 
is just 2. Then copy number 3. Then 2 divided by 3 is 0 0.67. That's our new range for a 3-point Likert scale. So what does it mean again? You just add them. So for example, the lowest is 1. 1 added to the add our range, 0 0.67. So our new uh, scale for Kupur is 1.67 or 1 to 1.67. Then remember that last one, 1 1.67 plus our range, which is 0 0.67. So that is 2.34. That's our last. And again, since this is the last one, all you have to do is to just state the last or the highest scale, which is 3. 2.34 to 3. Okay. Now, how can we interpret the verbal interpretation in a Likert scale? Now that we know how to find the range, we can now find the verbal interpretation. Remember this one? This is the one that we computed a while ago. So we can now use this one. So remember, our mean for the first statement is 3.90. All you have to do is to just look on our new scale where 3.90 lies. So 3.90 is here between 3.40 and 4.20. That's why the verbal interpretation is agree. Next, 4.30. Just again, just find it on our scale. 4.30 is here in strongly agree. That's why it states it states strongly agree. Agree. 3.20 is here. In 2.60 to 3.40, that's why it's undecided because that's the verbal interpretation. And 3.80 is also in agree. Between 3.40 to 4.20, that's our overall interpretation. So I would like to show this to you. Most of the journals in research formats their table like this. They don't have the, uh, the inner linings of their tables. All they, have, all they have is just a line on top, a line on the bottom, and a line uh, separating the frequency and the subheadings of the table. And they will add, and normally they will just, for example, in verbal interpretation, you will only just see A for agree, SA for strongly agree, U for undecided, and A for agree. So, and the researcher would just like to, I uh, would just add the meaning of those letters at the bottom of the table. So, I hope you learn from our discussion for today. Again, this is Kenneth, and thank you.